Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about Unsleeve Media and the Mana Source. Uh, before I go into this topic, I will mention a show that I'm watching on the BBC. It is called Can't Pay, We Take It Away. And then there's another show called Proud to Be on Benefits. And these shows are obviously about the UK. And they remind me a lot of weds, um, people who are either in debt and use excuses and or are receiving benefits from the government. And a lot of these people sometimes have huge families and the disability is one of the excuses that is made the most. Uh, whether or not they have a disability, I'm not, some episodes you can't really tell. Uh, some episodes it's pretty clear that this person is a, in BBC terms, they call it vulnerable person. So I'm <laughs> watching this British show and it's, extremely addicting they have multiple seasons of it and i'm like wow this is like kind of like weds and this explains um there was a guy he wants to sell me power nine uh there's a catch though the catch that it is collector's edition and the even bigger catch is that the collector's edition has one corner that should be a square well he got rid of that corner to be able to play that in his deck and i asked him to get a price check on channel um, not Channel Fireball, a Card Kingdom, which had the highest buy list price for a collector's edition that he could find, and they wouldn't receive it. But I was talking to him, he's Asian, and we both don't like Wedge very much because of the fact that we grew up, hard work should be rewarded. You shouldn't ask for help unless you need to have help. So if you keep asking for help, if people who don't need help ask for help, and the people who donate out of the kindness of their heart or realize that eventually they've been scammed or ripped off in some way, then they're not going to donate to another person asking for help when they actually need help. I'm the type of guy who, if I need help, um, I have a beautiful family around me and they will help me. But if I really needed help, I wouldn't ask until it was absolutely necessary, until there was every option was explored. For Weds, his first action is to ask for help. So he doesn't explore how he can discount the thing. The first thing he did was start a GoFundMe or according to Weds, his sister started one without his knowledge, which then he later used to promote. And then his soon to be wife just kept yammering about the GoFundMe that whole time. You can read the tweet thing. It was, uh, it's pretty uh, interesting. And I've left uh, Wedge's wife out of this for the most part. I don't really show too much of his screenshots. I don't see a little, I mean, the UK mentality must be, based on what I understand from watching this show, the police officers don't do very much. Um, in the UK, you can be, what's it called? Like, um, it's like when you take over a property, but a squatter, and they treat you with like rights, and you can throw stuff at the landlord, you can beat down the landlord, and the government will still give you seven days to move out. And you're like, okay, cool. You can destroy the property, you can steal the pipes, uh, I, I mean, it's pretty bad. If you watch these shows, I imagine a whole country of wedges being just a country of squatters and people on disability. Now, nothing against disability. Again, uh, people are going to screenshot this and then be like, oh, MTG Lions against people. With this. No, I'm not. But you got to try. Like, I get it. And that's my whole point. The Manosaurus is very dangerous to our society because you have someone who can do stuff when he can go to conventions, he can fly on transatlantic flight. How long is a transatlantic flight? That's probably a work day. So are you saying that, you know, you can't work at an office, you can't work at a Walmart, you can't work at a Target? Is it beneath you? No. Like, here's what I tell every uh, worker I have. If you have a part-time job or if you have a passion, I actually appreciate that because uh, I know you have student loans. I know my job doesn't pay as much as, you know, let's say Halliburton or Chevron or even the companies, um, even companies I worked for in the past. I understand we're a small company. Uh, we don't have honestly that much money compared to these large multi-billion dollar companies. If you drive for Uber, I have the utmost respect for people who do two jobs. One of the um, people that worked in my office, uh, she did two 40-hour jobs a week. Crazy. 80 hours a week. Two different jobs. 
Uh, she worked for me for 40 hours, and then she worked for a different company, an IT company, for 40 hours. Because she had a lot of student loans. She had kids to support. And that's life. Life is not you deciding, hey, I want to go to UK on vacation, basically on donations, because where else would the money come from? But I don't want to work. I can be on a transatlantic flight, but I don't want to work. I can't work in the office, though. So I think it is a little disgraceful. I am a big proponent. Um, if you follow me on my other social media and stuff, and uh, no, I get a lot of flack for this. I'm a big proponent of helping uh, foster animals. I spend thousands every year. Even last year, I spent, I'm not going to go into it, a couple thousand dollars. The previous year, I spent almost five. It's because I know if I don't spend that money, if I don't foster this dog, the dog's going to be on the street, bad things are going to happen, and then eventually the dog will die. Uh, that is the eventual outcome. Most of the animal shelters in Houston are full all the time or they won't take a certain dog. They're not going to take a middle-aged, medium dog with heartworms, which is a long treatment, and $800 to boot for a medium-sized dog. So yes, that dog has needs someone to help it because it needs someone to go find it a new family. Oh, by the way, um, if you follow me on social media, Baxter has found a good home. Uh, and it was actually a one per, a person on my Facebook who I found who had decided to take him in. Very cute dog. Um, I did meet Baxter with my dog Norman, and we did have a good time together at a dog park. So, complete stranger just found me on Facebook and said that yeah, I wanted this dog. Um, I am. I think it is a front to people who actually need help. Um, when you have a quote e celebrity begging for help at every appropriate moment. And that's why, you know, Jeremy owns a business. Um, I own a business. We are business people. Jeremy, I don't, I don't know if he's ever had employees before. I assume that he has worked at an office before because he's mentioned it. So he must have coworkers at least. You have responsibilities. You have a responsibility to my workers, to my interns. I have responsibility to make sure that they feel good and they get paid on time and uh, even basic stuff. Uh, but when you're one person living at home your entire life and you don't go to socialize, you don't. this is what you become. You become very isolated and you don't have any pressure to be better and do better. And that's very sad. Um, so when I look at my friends, uh, I... <laughs> I talked to one of my friends who was a patent attorney. I might go back to patents again uh, because of this. He makes $340,000 a year as a patent attorney for a tech company. I went to school with him. He was actually my junior. He was one year be below me, and I helped him pass his patent bar exam. So we're still very close friends. I have a friend from high school who used to be bullied and teased. And then he went to UPenn and UPenn Law, and he probably clears a quarter million dollars. Not a quarter, sorry three quarters of a million dollar a year in Los Angeles. So if you go out there and you have friends who are better than you, smarter than you, um, better looking than you, <laughs> that doesn't matter too, then you feel like you have to accomplish something. But if you're in your basement, if you're in your parents' basement the whole time and you isolate yourself and all you know is social media this, social media that, I'll be quite frank. I don't give two blanks about social media because it's all fake people. I, it's the one thing that I'm so grateful for, Chan. Like I would not be continue. I would not continue to make videos unless I had that conversation with that dude on 4chan. So if you guys don't remember, back when the whole counterfeit thing happened, I uh, was talking to the counterfeiter. I posted it, and then 4chan went berserk on me. They actually thought I worked at Dariums, and they shut down Dariums. Uh, they just Gave him so many robots and spams that he uh, shut down. His, he shut down his website. So I do apologize for that, Darian. But he did get a lot of traffic. And he did post my video and then the things, right? Um, but where did, this, where did these people come from? They came from 4chan. And I had an honest conversation with a person from 4chan. And he was a father of one. And he was the biggest troll of them all, right? He was a king troll. And he was a father of one, and he told me that most people in 4chan are only there to see things burn. They don't play Magic, they don't play Pokemon, they've never even heard of the game. They're just there to destroy stuff. And if you watch these UK episodes about the squatters, 
you know, instead of making the the place that squatting really nice and really like homely, they go out of their way to absolutely destroy as much as possible. They take piping, they take electricity, they put very dangerous, they throw trash around. Uh, there was one episode with a bunch of squatters. Um, they were like living in like an uh, airport or something, like a abandoned airport hangar. And they are a warehouse. They were living in a warehouse and there was like 40 of them in the car, car, car vans. I'm not really sure. I'm not familiar with this term, but car vans, it's like a van that they kind of live in. Uh, with electricity and they had kids and stuff and they just absolutely tried to destroy stuff their only objective is to destroy and that's what you have with the mana source uh, it really is to people actually in need to people who don't have homes to people who are in crisis uh to people who you know their families just are not there they cannot support them and maybe they're in debt maybe they're in student debt to be honest it's a affront to other people in need, for someone who's not in need, for someone who can, I believe, work with the quote IBS disease, and not disease, not even disease. Like, what's IBS? A symptom? Like, who, who knows? Yeah, I think it is a symptom, right? The S, irritable. Yeah, syndrome. Oh, it's a syndrome. It's just embarrassing, and it's just it's not good. Um, so whenever you read about the homeless guy who drives away in a Mercedes Benz, people are less likely to donate to homeless people who need the money, right? They're like, oh, okay, I, I don't want to be part of this. I don't want to give money to someone who's richer than me and pretending that they're homeless. Or whenever um, for the BBC, you see the benefits that someone receives when they have eight kids or uh, the doles they receive. Uh, they call it a dole. So, so I'm used to, I watch so many episodes now that like I use the, uh, BBC lingo, right? Because they're always talking in like funny like words, right? Dolls, right? Like they received this dole out payment. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, cool. My point is it makes people angry. It makes news headlines. Uh, it makes people really upset. Weds made news headli headlines, right? He was across Channel Fireball. He was across every single huge. He was on the rank one Reddit. Like Weds the concept of donating to someone with no health insurance in Magic the Gathering has already been established. So the next person who claims that they don't have health insurance, and maybe there's a better reason. Uh, Wedge's reason is I couldn't afford it, but I really think he could, in my personal opinion, of course. He can use Puko points to pay for it. And the next person who really needs help is less likely to receive money and or will receive less money because we all know about the wedge syndrome where he still doesn't have health insurance. So, I mean, why donate to this type of scenario when it's just going to create a future problem? And that's very sad because there could be a person out there who does need help and they're not going to receive it due to the greed of an individual who didn't need help. Now, I'm not saying that wedge doesn't need help. He clearly does. What I am saying, and I'll be very clear as to my point right now, if you made it to this point of video, I'll be super clear with you guys, is you should exhaust all your options before seeking help. Your first option should not be asking for donations. That was Wedge's first option. That is the Wedge's, that is the wrong mentality. If you need help and you have exhausted all your options, I will help you. But if your first option and your first thing that you are thinking to do is to ask for donations, I have no respect for you because you should have at least tried harder. And that's the same thing with the disability and the thing like, look, if someone's disabled and they're at their parents' basement, the best thing for them to do is to go out and experience. And I have the utmost respect for that employee at McDonald's who was mentally handicapped who worked for 20 years. It's a fantastic story. It is a human story that I love to death. Like if I, you know, if I met him, I'm like crying right now because it's one of those things that really moves me because I, I feel like um, I see this with my own employees, the gas station employee. Like I give people chances when other people won't because I was given a chance and my family was given a chance. We moved to America with $50, right? We are fine right now. And 
I understand when you are poor, when you are dirt poor like I was when I was a child, you see the best in people and you see the worst in people. Plenty of people scammed us because we didn't know better. My mom didn't speak English very well. My dad spoke semi-English. I was a kid at the time. But you also see the best in people. The absolute best in people. And whether or not you choose what view, perspective you choose, is up to you. Anyway, bye.